Do you get frustrated with all the hype around allocated bottles? Do you wanna just buy great whiskey off the shelf? Well, if you said yes, then you're gonna to wanna to watch this episode because we are about to share the top 10 underrated shelf available bourbons that we crowdsource. So stick around. For the use, we're gonna to have to do some disclaimers. So yeah. first off, these are underrated bourbons. Right. Okay, so these were crowdsourced. We did not pick this list. Okay, so if your favorite's not on here, we don't want you to get upset. Right. We source this from members of Bourbon Real Talk community, and all of these were by vote count. Right. And so we're actually going to do them in reverse order. So the first one that we're gonna mention got 10th place by votes, and the last one we're gonna mention was number one by votes. Ooh. Okay. And we did have a lot of rice, toasted barrel recommendations, and we threw those out uh, along with finished whiskeys because we are putting together a bourbon list. Yeah. So if you love Woodford Double Oak or something like that, the reason why it's not in is because it wasn't just a regular straight bourbon. Mm -hmm. And then also all of the prices are from our local Total Wine. Your area might have different prices, so let's jump right into it. Well, before we do, I want to say that this is the first time that I'll be seeing this list. Mm. Okay? I mean, I saw the votes going on. But I'm actually interested to see because I want to say whether I agree or disagree. Okay, perfect. Because that's kind of interesting because, you know, I... I've had quite a bit of bourbon. And right. so I think that there are some underrated. I'm excited to see if they're on this list. So let's get right to it. Number 10, Old Forester Signature. Okay. This was the 100 proof version that they have. It's produced by Old Forester. MSRP is $22.99 for a $750. Mm -hmm. And the predominant flavor are banana runts. What are you th your thoughts on this pour? My thoughts are that uh, this belongs on the list, I agree. It mm -hmm. is underrated. Uh, a lot of people jump right to the 1920, mm -hmm. or uh, you see that one on a lot of lists a lot. as the favorites. But this one is an equally as delicious pour. A lot better value on the price. $22.99 is hard to beat. Um, and if you are a banana runs flavor kind of guy or gal, um, it's definitely right in your wheelhouse. Yeah, and, and to be honest, I prefer the 1920, but in terms of value pours, this one is a heavy hitter and should yeah. not be overlooked. Absolutely. All right, coming in at number nine is obviously very close and near and dear to my heart. It's the Knob Creek Nine Year, produced mm -hmm. by Jim Beam. And at MSRP of just shy of 30 bucks, um, I don't know why anyone in the world wouldn't have one on their shelf. Right. It, it is absolutely. And for me, the predominant flavor is like a cherry cola mixed with a nuttiness. Somebody said one time uh, that it tastes kind of like if you, if some people do this, they'll put peanuts inside of a soda. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, and they yeah. said it tastes like a cherry cola with, mm. uh, with peanuts in it. Yeah. Um, it, do you agree? I do agree. I love that beamy nuttiness that I, uh, have come to enjoy thoroughly. So yeah, it's right there. It's got that nuttiness to it. Uh, I do get a little cherry and really recently we just cracked open the, uh, the Knob Creek 18 and it's very cherry. Super forward. cherry forward. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's kind of rare that something would hold on to those fruity notes for that long. So well done, KC. Uh, number eight is 1792 Small Batch. Uh, the producer is the distillery Barton 1792. The MSRP is about $27.99 for a 750 milliliter. And for me, the predominant flavor is a cherry cough drop. So it is cherry flavor, but it's a little bit medicinal. Uh, but I frequently get a smoky note on that. Mm. And that one is kind of near and dear to my heart. I've had the opportunity to go out there and meet with their former master distiller who's been promoted inside the Sazerac brand. Um, and you, you know, it's just a great place. And you, you did a single boat barrel selection. We right? did a, a barrel select there. And um, I love the 1792 stuff, but I have to be honest, okay? Um, there are probably, and we'll see what the rest of this list looks like, but there's probably one or two that I'd probably sub in this area just because I'm not a, a big small batch fan. Maybe it's the cherry cough syrup for me. Mm -hmm. um, I love their um, their full proof, um, and I love their 12 year. I love bottle uh, bond. Bottle and bond. Um, I just I'm just not a big fan of this small batch, but teach their own. Coming in at number seven, we've got the Russell's Reserve 10 year. 
All right, it was one of my early favorites in my journey. I had a friend uh, that was helping me come along and he said, man, if you see one of these on the shelves, you should absolutely pick it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's made by Wild Turkey, of course. Uh, and for the MSRP of $33.99, I mean, my friend was absolutely right. And I yeah. still have it on my shelf. It's kind of one of my daily drinkers, so to speak. So I get the uh, like a darker cherry, like I guess Luxardo-y, mm -hmm. a little bit sweeter note to it, uh, mixed with that nuttiness that uh, you sometimes get with some of the wild turkey stuff. I mean, me personally, I have a rule that I'm looking to spend 10 to $12 per year of age. Mm -hmm. And being a legacy distillery, you know, those rules don't necessarily apply. So for $33.99, uh, it's kind of hard to beat that. That yeah. is an amazing value at that price. Yeah. So number six coming in, we've got Benchmark. Oh, yeah. And sometimes people were voting for a specific uh, SKU, and sometimes they were just saying Benchmark in general. Right. I happen to like them all, and so I counted all the votes together. Yeah. It is produced by Buffalo Trace. It is Mashbell One, which is the same as some of their iconic brands that are highly allocated. MSRP, depending on which version, is $15.99 to $23.49 for a $7.50. And what are the flavors that you get on this one? Um, well, a lot of the Buffalo Trace stuff, you get that grape. Mm -hmm. I get that grapey, uh, almost diggly chew, kind of artificial grape mm -hmm. uh, flavor to it. Um, sometimes cherry, uh, because the uh, especially on the um, the uh, full proof, mm -hmm. uh, benchmark full proof, it's kind of that Stag Junior esque type cherry pie flavor, baked cherry that I get. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, grape and cherry all day. Did you know that bourbon can only be made in Kentucky? False. Huh. Truth is. Bourbon can be made in any state in the United States. Well, did you know that good bourbon is only made in Kentucky? False again. Have you tried Still Austin? What's Still Austin? How'd you do that? Don't worry about it. Still Austin is a little bit different than others. First of all, they use heirloom grains. All of them are sourced from the state of Texas, which is gonna create biodiversity, but it's also gonna throw off some flavors that are a little bit more bold than what you're used to from the commodity grains from Kentucky. And two, they use a column still. A lot of people have had negative experiences with Texas bourbon because it came off of a pot still and it throws off flavors that they're not used to. So you end up with a flavor that's bold enough to be considered a Texas whiskey, but not so off profile that if you're used to Kentucky, you're not gonna like it. So everything really is bigger in Texas. True, everything is bigger in Texas, Wes. Yes. Still Austin. Bourbon Real Talk approved. To have a bottle shipped to your door or find a retailer, click the link in the video description. Number five uh, is the Early Times Bottled and Bond. Um, it's producers, uh, Sazerac slash Brown Foreman. Yeah, it's formerly uh, Brown Foreman. Yeah. They sold the brand uh, in mid-2020. And this has created some confusion because... It kind of had a, a traditional brown foreman kind of flavor profile, which yeah. would I would say is like more banana runts. Um, and, and Sazerac is filling in with distillate from 1792, which is that, you know, cherry cough syrup and, yeah. and a little bit of a smokiness. And so the rumor was that when they bought the brand, they got all of the aging stock. And so I was under the impression that for years, nothing was gonna change with the flavor profile. But so many people have reached out to me and said like, have you tasted the new releases? Like yeah. they don't at all taste like the old ones. Mm -hmm. That my guess is, is that they may have started blending in some of the Sazerac whiskey um, so that whenever they do have to switch 100% over, it's not yeah. like so shocking. Like you said, if it's that brown foreman nod to it, you're gonna get those hints of banana, almost like a banana nut bread, kind of like a, a warm, tasty, savory banana nut bread uh tasting notes for me um but you know i don't know that i've had any of the newer the newer early early times yet yeah i looked See, it up and the tasting notes are all over the place right. so it's like so, I, yeah. I don't even know what to tell you to expect but i'm right. certain that it's a high quality whiskey because it's on a lot of people's lists yeah uh number four we have evan williams bottled and bond mm -hmm. which uh my friend wes here introduced me to i mean obviously yes. i had heard of it but uh man you, you were on your way over to the house and you're yeah. like, hey, do you want one of these? And I was like, yeah. Sure. And then I opened it and I'm like, why am I drinking anything but this? This is right. so good. It's, it's unbelievable. When you see a whiskey that's less than $13 for a bottle, uh, you, you almost immediately just write it off as like 
this is going to be disgusting. Right, it can't be good. It can't be good. And I don't know how they do it, but Evan Williams is able to do a bottled in bond, which we all we've talked about the the the, the strict guidelines that go into that. Put out a a 100 proof really really quality bourbon for less than $13 a, a bottle mm -hmm. that's that's amazing you get those nutty flavors that I that I always get with the Heaven Hill stuff and that Evan Williams nuttiness um and I first you said you get a little orange orange-ish orange yeah I peel. get like an orange zest or like an okay. orange peel or something <clears throat> mixed in with this nutty flavor yeah it kind of reminds me of those um the the Orange sliced Gummies. candies yeah. that you know you used to get when you were a kid yeah. for for Halloween. Um, so yeah, uh, but produced awesome. by Heaven Hill, solid product. Uh, number three, we have Wild Turkey 101. This one was my personal vote. Mm. Produced by Wild Turkey, 21.49 for a 750. You can get that price below twenty dollars if you buy the larger format bottle. And for me, Wild Turkey, I get uh, dark cherry. And sometimes some nuttiness, um, but it's kind of an undercurrent, so it's yeah. not as predominant with the Heaven Hill yeah. or the Brown or the Heaven Hill or the the Bean products. But I sometimes get a hint of a nuttiness on there. Sure. But this is one of the best values in whiskey, and I think yeah. that when you when you talk to people who have had enough whiskey experience to have tried many of the highly allocated bottles, and you ask them what's cheap that you like. I feel like a large percentage of them will say Wild Turkey 101. Absolutely. And if, you've, if you've seen any number of top 10 lists of affordable bourbons on YouTube or anywhere online, um, you're going to see Wild Turkey 101 in that list if, if they're worth their weight because they, uh, they are doing it right at a great price point over there. And obviously, it's just kind of a staple within the whiskey community in general and specifically the whiskey enthusiasts. What do we got for number two? Uh, number two, and again, we're working our way from the 10 to one, right. 10 being, um, you know, the less amount of votes. We're getting to some high votes right here of the most underrated bourbons. Mm -hmm. and number two is Four Roses. We've combined the small batch, small batch select, single barrels, again, votes all over the place, but Four Roses definitely got a lot of love from the folks at BRTC. They're obviously produced at Four Roses. Mm -hmm. uh, MSRP ranges like $32.99 to $52.99 for the 750 mil. Um, and those predominant Four Roses, a little bit floral, and you also get some smoked cherry in there, yeah. at least for me. Um, you get a lot of those floral notes, more so than any other distillery in my opinion. So fruity floral, um, kind of the predominant thing. I usually get a cherry. Um, but I've had a couple, especially some of the single barrels that had a real strong smoke component. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one of the telltales for me. But and this one surprised me a little bit. Who came in number one for vote count? This is a little bit surprising. And at the same time, I completely get it. Right. Because it belongs in the top two or three. And it is the OGD, Old Granddad 114. Yep. Right. When you have, produced by Jim Beam, which is probably why I love it so much, but when you can put out 114 proof at the price point of 1950 to 2250. I mean, solid, solid yeah. uh, for, for that price. No, I agree. Uh, Pre predominant flavors for you? Um, let's see, for the old granddad, let me think. You know, I, I have to say they're going to have that nutty, the nuttiness to it because being from the Beam Distillery, I get that with everything that they put out. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess a little bit of orange. With I, it. I get a little bit of orange and then it's got a slightly higher rye content. So sometimes there's some rye based flavors yeah. in there, a, a little bit of clove, nutmeg, cinnamon, that kind of thing. <clears throat> um, but solid pour, solid price. Uh, so in conclusion, if you don't want to hunt down allocated bourbons and you want to have a nice drinking experience based on flavor, you don't have to spend a bunch of money to have access to world-class bourbons. Uh, you don't have to drink allocated whiskeys all the time. Uh, there's always plenty of high quality bourbon on the shelf at an affordable price. And if you know what to look for, you're never going to be disappointed based on flavor. So hopefully, yeah. This uh, saves you a little bit of time, energy, and effort, and you can go get some good pours for yourself. Randy, am I allowed to throw in a, a, a bonus? Throw in a bonus. Let me get a bonus for you folks. Let's see what you got. You know how I love the Beam Distillery, and this is one that's been tried and true. It's a bottled and bond, unfiltered, old tub, 
Man, I mean, it's usually on the bottom shelf, 20 bucks-ish. And uh, guys, this is a, another great pour. So as you're looking through these aisles and you're like, man, these prices are outrageous. Take your eyes down a couple shelves. You'll see some of these products that we've been talking about here on the top 10. And the old tub is no exception. Really good stuff from, uh, from Beam. What do you think? It's amazing. <laughs> For a tw I mean, a $20 It actually bottle. got a lot of votes. It almost yeah. made the top 10. Okay. So yeah. It almost so made the top alone, 10. I'm not alone. See? It's, yeah. it's an honorable mention. No, no. Pe people really did it. like this one. Yeah. It's got a little bit more um, fruitiness to it. And I'm getting some, um, and this is weird, but ruby red grapefruit. Ruby red grapefruit? Yeah. I'm getting a little ru ruby she's red. in there? Let me see. A little ruby red grapefruit, man. You know what? I do get a little ruby red. It's really good. A little ruby red sunscreen. Yeah, action. yeah, because there's like there's it's got that little sunscreeny. There's some sunscreeny like uh, it's a, it's it's tropical. But it's really good. It's really good. Really Just good. Check it out. So hope you found this episode helpful on your journey, guys. Sometimes the hype train just needs to sit at the depot for a while. Exactly. While you go out and enjoy some more affordable, readily available bourbons. And so this is what this episode is all about. And let me tell you, or let us tell you what this show is all about. It's about bringing people together around this great brown spirit that we all love. Exactly. And that's something that's important to us. Um, that me in particular, I lost a loved one to suicide in 2014. And that caused me to go out and try and search for ways to encourage people to live a mentally healthy life and to acknowledge the fact that many people out there struggle and a lot of us don't feel like we are free to, to talk about it or mm -hmm. to go out and get the help. And so as I started to look for ways to open up connectedness so that those healthy habits could develop, I looked into suicide prevention speaking and getting involved in different organizations. But eventually in noticing the connected nature of the whiskey enthusiast community, I thought if I can build a podcast that's gonna help people get connected to whiskey, whiskey will do the rest of the job and get people connected together. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of the reason why we started the channel. But Wes eventually convinced me to start an online forum for whiskey enthusiasts like you. And that's why we started Bourbon Real Talk Community. And the whole idea behind it was, let's get rid of all the negativity and create a space for people of like mind that have a similar interest in a hobby, whether they have anything else in common or not that they can get together and get connected with one another. Yeah. And it, it, it seems to be working. Um, and, and as I went through the process of growing in the whiskey enthusiast world, I knew that we needed a space like Bourbon Real Talk Community because I saw so many people being hateful to strangers online. Mm -hmm. And so not only did we start the community, but it also made me realize that if those strangers can be hateful to you online, there's nothing that keeps us from loving you, even though technically we don't really know you that well. And that's why we end every show the same way, and that's this. If you woke up this morning and you're unsure whether or not anyone loved you, just know that we, we love, love you. you. We'll see you next time on Bourbon Real Talk. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, produced, of course, by the Russell Boys over at Wild Creek. Wild Creek. Uh, it's not a wild creek. Uh, I'm sure there's a creek that gets wild when it floods. <laughs> you know, it floods sometimes in Kentucky. Yeah, it does. And it gets serious. So I'm sure there's a creek somewhere near Wild Turkey. Sure. I'm just trying to stay my boy here. Yeah, well, let's just start again. Okay. All right. So than any other distillery, in my opinion. Yeah, Flutie. Flutie. Flutie? Flutie. A new, that's a new tasting it's a new note tasting we just note. came it's up flutie. with. It's like it's 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 like if you could taste what a flute sounds like. Right. That's not true. We should probably cut that part out. <laughs> we're already rolling? Why wouldn't we be? Because we're... we're rolling, rolling, rolling. Every, every, rolling, 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 rolling. Well, let's get right to it here. All right, so let's here. One. All right. Let's... So, what? Go ahead. You, you go ahead. All right. <laughs> What's it? How's it going? What? I'm just, just a baby. baby. Hey, nice hat. Hey, thanks. Nice lanyard. Nice rocks glass. Thanks, man. <laughs> nice travel case. Nice blend topper. Thank you. Nice candle. Nice bottle bag. Thanks, man. That's a nice tumbler.
Nice woman's t-shirt. Oh, thanks. Nice uh, extra schmedium shirt. Get yourself some nice things and get all the compliments that come along with it. Shop bourbonrealtalk.com.